Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And on behalf of the Cavan Chamber of Commerce, you're all very welcome to the Imperial here in downtown Cavan. And of course, thank you all for taking the time to come out on this cold winter's evening for what no doubt will be a very positive and uplifting event. Because the theme of tonight is positivity. The theme of tonight is improving our business. And in fact, the theme of tonight is to make us be more effective and efficient in running our business. We're going to have to look at our industry more positively. We're going to have to look at our own businesses more positively. But most of all, we're going to have to look at ourselves more positively. But there's no doubt about it. It's been a bad month for business. We've seen household names like HMV, Pablo Scott, and Black Tie all gone bust. We've also received the news that Tesco has been granted planning permission for the new superstore. And there's no doubt about it that listening to all this negative news can bring us all down. But it's vital that we stay positive and keep focus on making our own businesses better. And that is what tonight is all about. Our first speaker tonight is Jim Burke. He's a local businessman, but he's also the president of the Cavan Chamber of Commerce. And he's the hardest working president I know, with the possible exception of President Obama, and even at that, it would be a close call. Since he's been elected, he has worked tirelessly for the Chamber, and for the business, and indeed the people of Cavan. And he'll be stepping down at the next AGM, and I have to say to his replacement, he's going to be a hard act to follow. Jim is here to speak to us on how we should all stick together and work together and move forward as a business community. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'll ask the chair, the president of the Cabinet Chamber of Commerce, Jim. Colin, thank you very much. I didn't realise it was doing that much, but um, good evening, all. Um, first of all, I suppose I'd like to thank everybody for coming here this evening. And I'd also like to thank Lynn for her effort that she's put into organising this event here this evening. It's, it's no easy task to organise anything like this, and thank you very much, Lynn. Um, tonight, we hope to discuss three different issues. I hope to speak to you, I will speak to you, on how, Cavan, how we can move forward together as a business community. Cara McDermott from Cavan Institute will speak about social media and how Twitter and Facebook <coughs> might be used as a cost-effective medium for advertising and promotion. Lastly, we have Kira Conlon, author and positivity and productivity coach to businesses. Kira will speak on how positivity and productivity can impact on your business and how to move forward. I would like to welcome both speakers for giving up their time on a voluntary basis to speak with us here this evening. Um, many of us in this room will know each other quite well on a personal basis. We will pass each other on the street and say hello we will stand and talk about the economy and the weather. What I wish to talk about here is how we can develop those relationships into helping each other as businesses. Many of us here are in direct competition with each other. However, we have the same goal, which is to provide a reasonable standard of living for our families. In present times, whether we like it or not, we need each other. All of us are quite good at certain aspects of our business, but can be quite poor in other parts of it. The person who is very good at window dressing may be weak in accountancy and spreadsheets. The person who is good at spreadsheets may be not too good on displays. I, I could go on, but, but I think you get the picture. What I'm asking here this evening is for people to discuss these issues with each other and to hopefully help each other out and to use each other's expertise in the relevant areas. For Cavan Town to prosper, we, we as a retail and business community, I feel, and I feel this very strongly, we're, we're going to have to work together to promote our town and show potential customers we are open for business and offer a wide range of, of everything. Town centres to survive in the future will have to be managed like shopping centres. But this cannot happen unless all retailers become involved in the various events that need to be organised throughout the year. Over the past year, Cavan Chamber, in conjunction with the retailers in our town, came together and organised a very successful sale week. We also ran a successful media campaign to promote Shop Local over the Christmas period, 
where over 20,000 euros worth of vouchers were purchased in the month of December. This is money that would be spent in members' shops. Again, retailers in Cavan Chamber came together and purchased and erected a new set of Christmas lighting. And it was something we were very proud of, as our town, we should all, I think we all agree, looked very well and festive over the Christmas period. We also organised a business watch scheme in conjunction with Angada Sheikhana and Danny Barr from Kintech Technologies. These are just an example of what can be achieved when we work together. However, these events, they cost money. In fact, the same week cost in the region of 5,000 euros to promote, while the whole lighting project, the total cost was over 30,000 euros. And in many of these things, and it seems to be the same people who contribute to all of these connections. And tonight, I would like to take this opportunity to thank you for contributing. However, I would also ask people who do not contribute to please start doing so, as this will make it cheaper for us all. All of these events are organised for one purpose only, and that is to promote our town as a pleasant environment to shop and to do business. We intend to have many more of these events in 2013. However, this cannot happen unless all businesses unite in contributing and also to help run these events. Also, many of us, we are so busy at a day-to-day -day basis operating our businesses that we tend not to look at the bigger picture. I think we are all guilty of this. I certainly am. What I would suggest here this evening is that January and February, it's, it's a funny time of the year, but it can be a tough time of business, but it an also gives us an ideal time for us to take a fundamental look at our businesses. Stand back. Look at your business as if you have just bought it and it is your first day at work. Be very critical in your analysis. <coughs> look and see what you can change to improve your business. Implement those changes. Set yourself two goals with the end result in mind. That's just some ideas. Last week, we were very disappointed, I suppose, to hear of the news that, um, from Moore Panola that had granted planning permission for Tesco to build a new superstore on the outskirts of Cavan Town. It has now become more important than ever for us, the business community, to portray ourselves as a positive, forward-thinking and open for business. We can compete with these large multinationals because we know our customers' names, we listen to them, and in turn, we can provide what they require. We are here are no strangers to competition here in Cavan, having successfully competed with our neighbours across the border for many years. We must use our strengths, and we have many, to keep our town alive. And I said before, a great place to shop and do business. And um, finally, before I get down here, it would be remiss of me not to mention Cavan Chamber. We are in business for our business. However, to have a strong and relevant chamber, we need you. And if you are not a member, please become one and support us. If anyone wishes to become a member and has any inquiries, there's application forms here from Bernie tonight, or also speak with myself or any one of our directors. We have 17 directors on the board of Cavan Chamber of Commerce, and I would also like to take this opportunity to thank them for their efforts over the past while. Thank you very much. Social media is something we've all heard of, but still mystifies some of us. And we're lucky tonight to be joined by Cara McDermott of the Cavan Institute, and Cara is going to give us an overview on how to use social media to keep in touch with our customers and improve our business in general. So, ladies and gentlemen, Cara McDermott. My name is Cara McDermott, I'm a multimedia tutor with Calvin Institute. So, um, with changes in technology and multimedia sector and applications and software, we have to go with the changes also. So, we're all learning. Um, social media has been around for a long time in different mediums and it's becoming more and more part important um, in everyday life, in your general communications and especially in business. Okay, so um, why am I here? Um, the Cavan Institute is very proud that to be a member now of Cavan Chamber and we're very eager to work with the Chamber in any way we can help businesses around the town and likewise. Um, 
There was a need, uh, training needs analysis carried out by Lynn, uh, by the members, and it became very apparent that the great need coming back from members was more knowledge on social media and how it could benefit businesses. Um, one important thing to remember about social media is that it's, it's a free web presence, usually. Okay, um, you can pay for some ads with Facebook and so on, and there is there can be a cost element. But on the main, it's free. All you need is time and a little bit of know-how. So I'll just start here. Um, so what is social media? Okay, it's very broad. You'd never be on top of it all the time. It goes from your bloggers to pu for publishing, sharing information, photographs, um, a discussion, having a chat. So how many of you use Skype to talk with a relative um, in another country? Um, social networks, the, you see the old logo there for Bebo, that's pretty much gone now, um, but then the more uh, newer ones of your Facebook and so on. Um, Twitter then, and we'll look at that a little bit more in depthly tonight. Um, gaming, live streaming, um, and for the younger kids, Club Penguin, Moshi Monsters, you might have heard that. So it's huge, it's very, very broad. Um, why? Why would you bother? So I'm going to show you a little video to put it into context and um, we'll discuss a little bit more then after that, so bear with me. <laughs>
Okay, so I'd like you to think of your product and your brand as being so important and you have to mind your product and you have to get your product out there and get social media aware of it. Um, social me media needs to be monitored and handled really carefully. The privacy settings and the usage settings are very important. Um, more and more users are now mobile users. So people are walking, they ride to cabin down, they pick up their phone and they search, where can I eat, they might tweet it, um, the iPad, whatever. Um, it's really, really important to promote and to protect your product or brand. And you may consider keeping your business and personal profile separate. That can, depending on the nature of business, that can um, have different implications. So, I managed the Cabin Institute Facebook account and Twitter account. So, I'll just let you have a quick look at the kind of type of things we put up. So, that was our um, new course and the introduction to social media. So, as a result of the needs analysis, we said, well, we better put something together that people, if they choose to um, learn about this, that we can run. Um, the life, the, the brochure, thank you to uh, somebody that came to us about Corda Dojo, our strength and conditioning course. So it has to be snappy and regular and interest the viewer, because they won't bother going to the page otherwise. Um, and people love photographs. And then we have that linked to our Twitter account. So sometimes I update the Twitter account separately. I don't, I'm not under too much pressure to do that because I link my Facebook to it. But it also makes me think, because Twitter will only take 140 characters, I try to have my messages on Facebook not too long if one post will allow me to do so. So that's a tweet from last night. So wishing Calvin Jay and Connors um, every good wish with their venture into social media. And you pray every time that you don't have a spelling error in it. <laughs> it's okay, I have no other cue to keep an eye on the anyway. So just to inform you, um, we're running a short, you know, we didn't want anybody committing to anything too long. Um, introduction to social media course, two and a half hours um, for two nights, 30 euro. And the things we look at will be how to use your Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus, LinkedIn, Instagram. I said that all because something else might pop up that we'd um, bring into it. It'll be hands-on, you'll be in a computer lab, and it'll be great if you had G uh, an email coming in. We'll do a little bit of work on Gmail, so um, if somebody has a Gmail account as well, that'd be good. Um, so to have a little end on a positive tweets caption. So, so last night, um, I hounded Twitter, I said, you know, um, you businesses out there, I'm making a presentation to Cabot Chamber, what do you feel the benefits are? So this is Italian foodie, Lorraine, she's um, a restaurant down in Limerick. Um, so S social media has led us, uh, led us starting a new company called Real Italian Foodies and we're launching a rate of fresh pasta sauce in February. She finds Facebook very good for engaging with customers and the general pu public and Twitter is very good for engaging with peers, foodies and the industry. Um, social media has completely changed our business. From the day we went on Facebook in 2008, our business started growing and growing still. It is a small uh, Italian food restaurant in Limerick. I have, I have I've gone out of my way to go to it as a, as a, result, as a result of Twitter, excuse me. Um, they're flying. Um, this is uh, Paul in the shoebox in Kilkenny. So uh, we read back up. Uh, Facebook is excellent for retail to promote new products. Twitter is great for us to promote KK Kilkenny um, uh, for deals in hotels. Um, two thirds of local businesses, so more people will visit and put more into the local communities. It really works. Now that's a hashtag shop in KK, and they use that to try and promote people in Kilkenny. Um, and a group of local businesses use either the hashtag Kilkenny or Shop in KK, and that trended a while back, and it's good to or T to retweet other businesses. Now, if you think I'm talking another language, that's why we wrote the course and explained that a little bit more further. Okay. Um, so this is the Old Farm, a pig breeder in Tipperary, uh, pure bread, it's a speciality. They couldn't survive without it. They have no marketing funds, so they do it ourselves, and there's a time investment involved. Brendan O'Connor launched a new product this year. He's down in Kerry. In 2012, we launched our business barbecue sauce and we spent zero on marketing. We used Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Pinterest to generate awareness. To bring it a bit more local, oh no, sorry, the tannery down in Dungarvan. Social media opened up um, our, they have a restaurant and a, a, a school cookery course um, to an audience far beyond our small town. Helped our business during the last few difficult years. 
And then uh, Yasmin's here tonight and runs um, her Twitter account really, really well and her Facebook account. Um, and she has expressed to me last night, it's perfect for getting out the message about my business. I produce an online magazine, so social media is essential. And then there was just one more that I came in today, I added it. Um, this is Niall, he's in North Farnham. Uh, plenty of, he only joined six months ago, I think. Plenty of feedback from customers, because he said to me it was great, and I said, how, how do you know? And he said, um, new customers were sourced from Twitter, and also they got 10 new suppliers from Twitter. So I suppose I wanted to end on positivity, and I'm glad that the, the theme of positivity is here tonight. Um, it, there is a time investment involved, but it is worth it, and you just need to keep an eye on it, and um, and not, because it can, you, you know, people kind of say, oh, I don't want to hear about such and such, you want to have to have them for lunch. You build your timeline, you have people that you're interested in, but tweet out their sale now on new product in store, stick a photograph on it, and um, you engage people. And uh, people of Cavan will follow each other and retweet, so retweet means sending that tweet out again. The tweet that I sent out yesterday, um, you can do a thing called a tweet reach. So I just checked today um, how many people it had reached. 11,000. Now, not, it went to 11,000 accounts. Maybe not everybody saw it, but it has huge potential. Um, we sent out a tweet from the Institute for the Mock Studio uh, a few months back, and some nice person retweeted it, and we, I think we got a hit of 17,000. Um, this person had 17,000 followers. So it has huge power. And if you're a bit clever about dropping in Cavan, 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 your business name, your product, it has, um, it has great potential. Um, Cavan Institute is our brand. Our, our courses are our products. We have to protect them and mine them, and that's what we, we do to, uh, uh, as best we can. Um, the whole concept as well is to drip feed. So somebody's near Cavan. Oh, will we stop in Cavan or Monaghan for something to eat? They're driving up north somewhere. Um, oh, I remember a tweet or something on Facebook or something on Instagram. Um, there's a great place for shoes. There's a great place for clothes. There's a great place to get your hair done. There's a great place to have your nails done. Whatever the product is, um, just let people know that it's in the town. Okay? So if I can help anybody, it's, it's no problem. Um, Fanola is here, she's going to take any um, applications for course. I think you set up at the back of the room, will you, Fanola? Set up downstairs. Oh, downstairs, okay, yeah. so if anybody's interested. All right, so thanks for your time. Tonight is actually being filmed by Drumlin Media and is going out on Cabin TV, on YouTube and on the web. So uh, exactly what Cara has been talking about uh, is, is, is happening as we speak. Now as Cara said, the Institute is running a training course in all aspects and that she will be downstairs to be a table that if you want to talk to her, she can give you all the details. But if you are interested, I would say do it tonight, sign up tonight, because what often happens is you come away from something like this and you say, that's a great idea, I must do that course, that's a fantastic idea. And then you go back into the office tomorrow and the phone rings and something goes wrong and this happens and that happens. And at the end of the day, you've forgotten completely about the course that you were going to do and in a couple of days later, everything is, is just gone. So if you're interested, I will say sign up now. Uh, you can see the benefits that we're going to get as businesses. So uh, follow her, she'll be downstairs and absolutely do sign up. Well, it's now time for the keynote speaker that we have tonight, and it's Kira Conlon. And Kira being a, a typical female multitasker, she's author of a book, Chaos to Control, which as it happens is available in Essence. So if you're going in to get your copy, do say hello to Bicelli. She has appeared as a panelist on TV and on radio. She's a productivity and positivity coach. And as we're going to see now, she's a much sought after motivational speaker. So we can put our hands together and invite Sarah And I'm a productivity coach. So what that means is I help people identify what it is they want to do with their lives or with their businesses. And I give them strategies, tools, and techniques to make that happen. So the idea is that it happens as efficiently as possible with as, as little stress as possible. Now tonight what I want to do is share with you a couple of simple strategies. Simple strategies that will help you with your life and with your business. And it will help you to become more happier and more successful. But I'm going to start with a little story. 
And this story is set in the 1500s in Italy. And it's about a group of men who used to work really hard every day for a very hard taskmaster. Now, they got very little money for it and, and even less recognition. But one day, a man came into the town, a stranger came in, and he was wondering what these men were up to. So he came to the first man that he met, and this guy was looking very bored and apathetic, and his body language was very negative. And he went up to him and he said, what are you doing? And this guy replied to him and he said, I'm mixing paint. Right? So he walked off, none the wiser, and walked a little bit further up the path. Now as he walked further up the path, he came across another small group of men. And there was a man in that group who looked completely different than the other man. This guy actually looked excited about life. His face was full of light and he was happy and he looked excited. So he asked him the same question. And he said to the second guy, he said, what are you doing? And the second guy said, I'm busy creating a masterpiece. So you see the difference in obviously the perspective of these two men. But obviously the second guy realized that it was important to have vision. Because vision inspires and motivates us. A vision is your idea. What are your goals for the future? What are you trying to achieve with your business? Are you excited about your vision? Do you still connect to that purpose why you started your business in the first time? Because obviously your vision is going to inspire you. Sorry. Your vision is going to inspire you and motivate you to get up in the morning, no? So how many of you here can say that you're busy creating a masterpiece? Do you still connect with your reason for starting your business in that way? Or are you all just busy mixing paint each day? So that's what I want you to think about first of all tonight. That's what I want you to see that we need to connect back with that vision. Why do you do what you do? What's the purpose in what you're doing each day? Now a lot of people say to me, this is the biggest problem. They say, I don't, I don't really know what I want to do or what I want to achieve. Yeah, I may have known once, but now that's not the case anymore. And actually, I'm too busy with the day-to-day -day and all of the tasks and all of this that's going on. I'm too busy with that to actually sit down and think about, what do I want to do? Where am I going? I think Jim mentioned about setting a goal and having the end in mind. Well, you need to have the end goal in mind. You need to know what you're doing it for, why you're getting up in the morning. So as I say, this is a, a, a big problem. The first thing, if somebody wants to hire me as a coach, their biggest problem usually is, how do I figure out what I want to do next? Am I on the right path? And this is something I'm very familiar with as well, because about seven years ago, I was in that place. I was very confused and frustrated, and I didn't know what I was doing. I always thought and knew I'd be successful, but it wasn't happening. And at that time, I was just after having my third child, my son, and I was starting another business online. And I had him strapped to my chest in a rainbow colored sling, like an African baby. And the poor child sat there on my chest while I typed away, trying to start another business. But I knew probably deep down inside that it wasn't the right business and it wasn't what was going to be my higher purpose. But what kept going around in my head at that time, because everything in my life was chaotic and I was cluttered and you know, everything around me looked a bit like this. Oh no, that's the wrong slide. Ooh, I'm missing a slide. <laughs> okay, sorry guys. Excuse me for a little hiccup there. <clears throat> anyway, so at that time, as I say, I was all cluttered and chaotic. I ran ahead of myself. And one thing that went through my mind at that time was, if only I could get organized, okay? So that part of it was very important for me, was the getting organized. And obviously, as a productivity coach, that's what transformed my life. Now, I'm going to step back a bit because I did run ahead of myself.
And what I wanted to tell you about was connecting back with that vision. And the father of positive psychology, Martin Seligman, he says, in order to be happy, you must connect with your purpose. You must have a meaningful life, okay? But he described three types of a happy life. And the first type of happy life was what he said was a pleasant life. And there's my lovely slide now coming in. So he described a pleasant life. Now, a pleasant life is a life full of pleasant experiences. So going out shopping, it gives us a nice experience getting our hair done, getting our nails done. Now that mightn't work for the guys here, but maybe having a game of golf, or um, going to watch the rugby with your mates in the pub. Things like that, they're all pleasant experiences. And those pleasant experiences, yes, they make us feel happy, but they don't give us long-term intrinsic happiness, okay? So this is okay, this pleasant life, that's the first type of life he described, but this isn't what we're after. The second type of life he described was an engaged life. An engaged life is where you are doing what you're meant to do. So in the case of a musician, a musician is being creative, and this is what they were meant to do with their lives. So let's say it's um, working with their strengths. But again, this isn't the ideal life that we want to be seeking. What Seligman said was that we have to look towards a meaningful life. And a meaningful life is one where you're using your core strengths. So what I'm trying to say here is what you need to do is to look and see if you're using your strengths. And a meaningful life is when you're using your strengths, but you're using them for the greater good. So looking at your businesses, are you doing what you're meant to be doing? Are you living a life of purpose with meaning? And by looking back at that and connecting with that, that's going to give you the motivation to know that you're moving through life in the right way. So reconnect with that vision is what your mission is, if you choose to accept it. Right, so coming back to where I skipped ahead to earlier, and that was when I was telling you about my life and how I hadn't figured out my vision. I was chaotic, and my house looked a bit like this. This is how I worked. And that was when I said to myself, if only I could get organized, okay? Because subconsciously I knew that was the, that was the missing piece. That's what I was missing in my life. And as I worked each day, it was, was, was chaotic. And, and I couldn't figure out what was the next step or how I was going to get to be successful because I had started so many businesses. Now, fortunately for me, my husband is South African. That's fortunate as well. But fortunate for me, on a trip to South Africa, I was introduced to his uncle who had gone to the States and had trained with top productivity guru, David Allen. Some of you may be familiar with the book Getting Things Done. Now, um, Harris was his name, had trained with this guy, and I met him this day, a beautiful summer's day in South Africa, we were having a barbecue, and by the end of that barbecue, we had arranged that he was gonna come to Ireland and train me into the system that he had learned. So, over time, I learned this system, and over those years, I learned how to become a productivity coach, but I started to become passionate about the subject. My background was technology, so it tied in very nicely. I had trained to be a life and business coach, and it all fit in nicely together. So after this event and training with him, I realized that obviously something had to change. But the first step that I needed to do, and that was to start to clear the clutter. So if you are at this point in your life and you're feeling that chaos, that chaos and disorganization, the first point is to clear the physical clutter. So I cleared my desk, I cleared out my drawers, I cleared out my wardrobe, <laughs> and everything started to feel better. I started to feel a bit lighter. You know that feeling when you clean out the house and everything feels great? The energy shifts or it's something happens to make everything feel great. But it still wasn't enough because, you know, there was still something else that was cluttered. OK? 
Okay, so my head <coughs> was still cluttered. And I knew that this was the next thing I needed to tackle. Because what was going around there in my head was all the ideas and the tasks and the plans and the dreams and everything else that we have going on in our heads. And you see, the problem is your head is not a place for storing all of this stuff. Your head is there for having ideas and being creative and working out what you're going to do. And if you're walking around with all this clutter in your head, it's taking up processing space. It's taking up that space for you to be creative. It's taking up the space for you to be able to focus on what you're supposed to be focusing on. And it's preventing you from being the success that you can be. So what ha had to happen next was a process which I call the mind download. Now don't get scared about this, it's nothing science, uh, science fiction or anything. We're not going to do anything. But it's all about getting what's in your head out of your head. Excuse me. And it's a very basic process. So once a week this is something I do. I, I, I literally sit down with a pen and paper. Now you can also do this electronically if you like, a note in Outlook or in a program um, I'm going to recommend to you my favorite program which is called Evernote.com and you can use it online and on your iPad and it syncs with your, um, with your mobile phone if you have a smartphone. But the idea is that at least once a week, or I do it more often when I'm feeling stressed, is you literally write everything that's in your head. And that includes, it's maybe a piece of software you need to, um, to get for your business, the dry cleaning that has to be picked up, a party that needs to be organized, the football match of your kids that's been changed around, and most of us go around with all of this in our head. So the idea is to get it all out. And what you do is you do it like a brainstorming <coughs> session. Okay, you don't separate, you don't format it or do nice little bullets or numbers, you just write it all down on the paper. We deal with it later. And what that does is it relieves a whole load of stress that you didn't know was there. So what you need to do, get it out. The first time that I did this exercise, I was actually going to the airport to collect a friend. And I remember driving, and this is a, one of those memories that's so vivid. You know what they say when, when um, memories have a strong emotion that you remember them very vividly. Well, I can remember this. I can remember the, the sunlight coming through the trees on the, on the road as I drove down to the airport. And I had this feeling of excitement inside me. I felt light. I felt young and free. And I kept thinking about, do you remember um, the, the end of the, the term when you finished your exams and the whole summer lay out in front of you? and that feeling of no responsibility. And it felt fantastic. Well, this is actually how I felt. Now, when I say to people sometimes that productivity has been life-changing for me, they think I'm a bit crazy, you know? Productivity is such a boring wor word, and it's all about routine and organization. Well, it's not. Productivity is totally, it, it helps you become more creative. It's life-changing in that way helps you become more creative, and it helps you to be able to achieve so much more in life. So anyway, this was the feeling that I got that first day that I did it. So from then on, obviously, this has become a routine in my life. And I urge you to do that. Tomorrow morning, try it out. Now, once we get it all out on paper, obviously we have to do something with it. We have to get it into a system, okay? And the most basic, rudimentary productivity system involves a calendar and a task list. But you know something very interesting is the most advanced and highly technical productivity system involves a calendar and a task list. So you're halfway there if you can start with that. So a question for you guys, this is where you have to wake up and answer me, okay? How many of you here use a calendar? Just to show of hands hard to see with the light. Okay, good few. How many of you here use a calendar for more than just appointments and meetings? Okay, much fewer hands. 
Another question for you. How many of you would say you procrastinate? <laughs> Hands are there, I think, but they're much lower down. We're not admitting to it. Well, those of you who do procrastinate or have procrastinated, the number one tip that I have for you to beat procrastination is using your calendar. The calendar is such a powerful tool. And people think generally of the calendar. Yeah, I use my calendar, I put my meetings in, I put my doctor's appointments, I put all of that. Your calendar is a tool for scheduling your work. What gets scheduled gets done. So you need to use your calendar to plan out all those tasks that aren't getting done. All that work that's sitting there on the to-do list, that's not shifting, you plan it, you schedule it. Anything in your work life that takes more than 15 minutes should be scheduled into your calendar. Now, there are a good few things, obviously, that there are hundreds of things that I would like you to take away from this and lots of tips around a productivity system. But I want to just work you through the basic steps of a workflow system. And I'll do that quite quickly. But what I want you to think of is the exercise that I told you to do, the mind download, what that's doing, it's capturing work that needs to be done. Now, it may be pleasant work, it may be planning a party, or it may be doing your taxes, the bit that always gets pushed back until the very last minute. Okay? But all of this has to get done. So the mind download is a way of capturing that. But there's lots of other work coming at you from different areas and lots of other things, lots of other ways that you can capture that. Your phone could be emails, it could be voicemails, that's all things that you have to do. Your, your paperwork, some of you will get paperwork, others won't really work with paper anymore, but the post that comes in, there may be some bills that need to be paid and things that have to be done. So there's lots of different areas where work is coming at you. Typically, your inbox. How many people use their inbox, their email inbox, as their to-do list? Nobody's going to admit it anyway. If you do, I'm sure you won't. Your inbox is not, is not your to-do list, okay? It's one of the biggest flaws that people have in getting things done. It's they come in in the morning, they open up their computer, and they open up their email. And then they start to react. They're not in control. They're no longer in control of your workload. You haven't planned then what you're going to do. You haven't prioritized. You're letting everybody else that keeps throwing these emails at you tell you what to do, okay? So your inbox is a place that captures the work that you have to do. So all of these areas are capturing the work. What we have to do then is we have to go through a phase of processing your work. It's you making front-end decisions of what is it and how am I going to deal with this. So we use a system called um, a FAB system because it's short for File, Act or BIN. F-A-B. It's FAB. So every single bit of work that comes your way, there's only three things that can be done with it. You can file it for reference, you can act on it, or you can BIN it. And that works the same way for your paperwork coming in, the stuff that's coming out of your head, and for your email. There's only three things that can be done. Once you realize that, so let's say we've got rid of the filing, we've dumped what we need to dump. Now this is possibly a little bit small here to see, but basically everything follows the same workflow. So if we run through this very quickly, we ask ourselves these questions. <coughs> Does it require more than one action? So I've decided what I have here in front of me is an actionable thing. Does it require more than one action? If it requires more than one action, so it could be a case of a new project you're starting to work on, well then we're going to manage it as a project. If it doesn't, what's the next step? So you might have something that you took out of your head and you wrote down on paper, and it might be you might need to get new financial software. So what's the next thing that you have to do? Any ideas? If you want to buy new 
uh, accountancy software for your company? What do you need to do? Search what's out there, what's available, options are available. Okay, so that is the next step. That is your action that you need to plan. <coughs> so then what you're going to do with that is you're going to decide, <coughs> is this action date or time sensitive? If it is, we're going to put it into the calendar. If it's not, it goes into a task list. Now, you might ask me, what's the difference between a task list and a to-do list? How many people start the day with a to-do list? Okay, you write everything down that you need to do. And during the day, it gets a few nice ticks off or a highlighter gets rid of them. But what happens the next day? You take all the bits that didn't get done and you rewrite them again. And then you rewrite them again. And what happens with that is you're looking at this list. How many times during the day are you looking at this list? And you typically scan down and pick the nice one, no? And you forget about that horrible one that sits there. But what happens is you're wasting time. And not only are you wasting time because you're scanning the list, what you're also doing is you're adding to your own anxiety and stress, reminding yourself every five minutes of what still needs to be done. So what we want to do is move away from a to-do list and move towards a task list. And how a task list differs is that it's categorized. So if you have work to do on a, on a certain project, you're not thinking about it when you're not working on that project. It's not sitting there blinking and reminding you, you still have this to do, by the way. Okay, it's nicely packed away in the task list underneath Cavan Institute project, okay? So everything gets separated. And in this way, you're only thinking about the work that you need to do at the time you need to do it. So this enhances your focus and it reduces your stress. So coming back to this, we'll see that there's two ways it can go. If it's date or time sensitive, it goes into your calendar. And if it's not date or time sensitive, it goes to your task list. Now, as I say, I could talk about this for another couple of hours, but I don't think I'll be allowed. So, but this is the basics. So from what you can take from this, I suppose what I would like you to take from the, this uh, organizing part of it is Use the exercise, the mind download. It really works. Once you've got all that stuff, get it into, even if it's only a to-do list for now, put your tasks in your to-do list and put the rest into your calendar. Everything that's date or time sensitive. Use the calendar to plan out the projects that need to get done. As regards email, remember the fab. When you sit down, excuse me, we don't check our email, we process our email, and we do it when we decide to do it. My biggest tip for email is turn off the, you got mail, okay? Because again, you're reacting. You're in control of your email. You decide when you go there. First thing in the morning, you should open your calendar, not your email, because that's what you've planned for your day. And then use your email and process through it and put the stuff that's in your email into your calendar for your task list. So that's all the organizing. You're gonna be hyper efficient and totally productive next week. And what that does is it's going to clear some of that clutter to allow you to be able to focus on and to think about what that bigger picture, picture is and what your end goals are and reconnect with that vision, reconnect with that masterpiece. But I'm going to leave you with my top 10 tips for becoming more positive because, of course, now you know what to do, but you need to have, them, have that motivation and keep that inspiration going. So my top 10 tips. The first one, sorry, I'm only seeing now, guys, if that is in the way. The first one is positive thoughts. Now, we all know we should think positive, okay? Everybody tells us, and it's obvious, and it's quite um, airy-fairy because, yeah, what's that going to do? Well, what it's going to do is, if you talk to a child in a condescending way, or if you keep telling a child that they're um, not the best and that they can't really do things as well as they should do it, how is that child going to turn out? But what happens is our own inner dialogue is quite negative, and it's quite critical, and it's quite judgmental. 
So what you need to do is you need to monitor your own thoughts. And you need to counteract any negative or non-supportive thoughts with positive ones. Because that's how you're going to support yourself and that's how you're going to get through the difficult times. So monitor your thoughts and ensure every single one of them are positive. And it's not being silly and it's not being airy-fairy. It's helping you become a better you. As well as your thoughts, we want to surround ourselves with positive people, no? Because we all have friends and maybe family members who drag us down and suck the life energy out of us. We all have them. But we also have inspirational and positive friends that uplift us. And they're the ones you want to seek out. They're the ones you want to meet on a Monday morning when it's raining in the centre of Cavan and you've just got more bad news on the, on the radio or the television. Okay, seek out the positive people. I'm sure all of you here in the audience are positive, forward-thinking people. So support each other. As well as positive people, consume positive media. You don't need to watch the news at 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12. Once is enough. Get the news and move on. Look at positive, um, inspirational programs like Oprah. Listen to Lyric FM. There's no reason to constantly be reminded of the darkness. We know it's there. We're not being ostriches, pretending it's not there. No, we know what's going on. We're informed. But yeah, let's get back to something brighter and happier. Positive media. Affirmations. Again, a lot of people think this is a bit in the airy-fairy side, but an affirmation is simply a positive statement. And you know, Muhammad Ali is probably known for the most famous of affirmations. And what was his affirmation? I am the greatest. But in his book, he says that he used to say that before he believed it. And by constantly saying it, he convinced himself, and he certainly convinced the rest of the world. So positive statements. Now, what's important is that you find one that you believe in. So not that you're saying, I am fantastic and I'm the richest bitch in Cavan, okay? Because <laughs> you may not really believe that. But a statement that you believe in. I did a, um, I do regularly a, a meditation challenge with Deepak Chopra. And the last one that he did was about creating abundance. And he had the most beautiful affirmations. And affirmations like, um, from this moment forward, I invite unlimited abundance into my life. And abundance in all forms, in health, in wealth, in friends and family. So beautiful statements like that, surround yourself with them. Put them up on your mirror in the bathroom. Have it in your journal. Have it as a, a screensaver on your, your computer. There's lots of places where you can have it, just to remind yourself. And any time those negative thoughts strike, Replace it with one of your affirmations. The next tip is to be present. I think it was Lao Toots, and you can correct me if anyone knows um, if I'm wrong, but who said that living in the past is living with depression, living in the future is living with anxiety, but living in the present is living in peace. So that is something you should think about. And, and, and look at your own thoughts of where you are. Are you living mindfully each day? Or do your, are your thoughts constantly worrying about what might happen in business or what has happened in the past? Bring yourself back into the present and you will have a happier and more peaceful existence. The next one is gratitude. Now scientists are saying that there's a, a new study of gratitude that the simple act of giving thanks is increasing health and well-being and reducing depression and anxiety. So the simple act of writing down all the things that you're grateful for and looking at that daily can improve your well-being. I do it every day and I have it in my journal and I just remind myself of simple things, things that we all take for granted, your health, your sight, your hearing, all of those simple things. And again, as I mentioned, I'm married to a South African, so every time he applies for a bloody visa to go anywhere, I thank everybody for having an Irish passport. So that's another reason. So think about all those things because it's very difficult to feel depressed or sorry for yourself when you're feeling grateful. 
The next one is exercise. Actually, we probably could have put exercises one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in this list because we all know the importance of exercise. Exercise also um, increases serotonin and lots of other things in the brain that make us feel happier and it improves health and well-being and everything. It took me about 20 years to realise that I can't run and I hate the gym. So exercise doesn't have to be a chore. I play tennis, I have an exercise bike now. You can do Zumba, you can do some kind of a dance class. There are fun ways to exercise, but that really is so important. Um, Richard Branson, when asked what his number one productivity tip was, he said working out. He reckons working out gives him an extra four hours of productivity a day. So if he does it, I think it's worth trying out. Be kind. Being kind and doing acts of kindness, helping others, makes you feel good. It's as simple as that. It also helps them and makes them feel good. And smiling. Paul McKenna, you know the hypnotist Paul McKenna, I think his latest book was I Can Make You Happy. He's made us rich, famous and everything else, but he's making us happy now. I read in an article that he says, 20 minutes of smiling a day makes you happier, even if you don't feel it. So we'll all be going around cabin like this. <laughs> so it, it's also got to do with the actual act of smiling releases serotonin, which makes us happy. And the last one, quite possibly the most important one, is your attitude. So we cannot control the trials that life sends us, but we can choose how to react to them. So it's up to you how to choose what you're going to do with the rest of your life. Now, I'm going to end with a short little story, and this is another story about something that's happened to me. And back at that phase of my life when things weren't going too well for me, I had two small children under two, and I wasn't coping very well. And on one particular day, I was really finding it difficult, and I really felt like I couldn't cope. And my eldest son, probably about 10 at the time, he said to me, are you all right, Mum? And I said, no. I said, I have to get the boys dressed and get them out of the house. And that, to me, felt like such a struggle. And he said, but Mum, it's not that you have to. It's because you want to. And that, for me, was a life-changing moment because it made me realise that it's my choice, that I, I could stop playing victim to my circumstances and stand up and move forward and make the choice about what I wanted to do with my life. So that's what it all comes down to. Figure out your vision and you decide what's happening next. Yes, we can't control what's happening externally, but we can damn well control what's happening inside. So you have to take the helm, and you have to be the captain of your life. So I'll leave you with my favorite quote, and that is, I am master of my faith and the captain of my soul. So best of luck, everybody. for the formal part of the evening and again I want to thank you all for coming but I have to say an event like this just doesn't materialise just doesn't happen a lot of people put a lot of work in to make it happen and I'd like to thank those who did make it happen obviously the top of the list would be our speakers Jim Burke Kira McDermott and Kira Connell for an absolutely fantastic presentations. Uh, Donald Keoghan for the use of uh, the Imperial here. Brian Daly of Cavan TV and Dublin Media, which is videoing the entire presentation. As I said, it will be out on the web later on tonight. And Brian has some details there if anyone wants to pick them up on the way out. And also, Brian does a main corporate video. So if anyone is looking for a corporate video, Brian is the man to go to. Anne-Marie Lacey and Finola Kyo from the Cavan Institute, they put great work into the actual planning survey of which this event was based on. And Eileen Murphy was a great help in contacting everybody to get them to come here tonight. And of course, yourself for attending. But most of all, the woman who made it all completely happen was Lynn McGoohan. She came up with the idea, and we all come up with ideas, but Lynn was different. She followed it through, 
and she came up with an action plan which resulted in tonight's fantastic event. Yeah. So I'll yeah. kindly yeah. thank you. So that's it. Thank you all for coming. Good night to you all, and most of all, let's stay positive.